All right, today we're going to be talking about law of sines. You've had this back in geometry, but we're going to, of course, move more and do a little bit more with it. One of the things that we can do with law of sines is the area of a triangle uh, when we use two sides and the included angle. So think of side angle side. Uh, we can do area of a triangle. There's also another one that we're going to talk about tomorrow with law of sines, uh, but this is one of the things that we can do that is a little bit more than what you did in geometry. And then also we're going to use law of sines to solve a triangle. Remember, solving a triangle does mean finding all six values, all three sides, all three angles. So let's talk about that first one, the area of a triangle. These are the three different forms. Whether it's BC with sine of A, or AC with the sine of B, or AB with the sine of C. It's two sides, so like C and B here, and the angle in between. Or A and B here with the angle in between or these two with the angle in between. And it's the sine of that angle. Still have the one half because it is a triangle. So one half AC sine of B. All right, that will go ahead and always give you the area of a triangle. So let's go ahead and do that. Here we have a side angle side, two sides with an angle in between. So it's one half six times three times the sine of 25. And it's really nice because that way you, it, does find the height here. That's what this is doing. Um, but you don't have to really remember how to do that. It's just all in the formula. One half six times three. So one half of six is three times three is nine times the sine of 25 uh, gives you 3.8. So the area of that triangle is 3.8 square centimeters. Let's do another one. Here we have seven and four with 30 in between. So it's the sine of 30 with seven and four one half of that, and, and we actually get seven, seven centimeters squared. All right, law of sines. Sine of A over A equals sine of B over B equals sine C over C. We're going to be doing a lot of cross multiplying with law of sines. Now, for law of sines, you must have a pair. What do I mean by that? You must have angle A with side A, or angle B with side B, angle C with side C. Whichever one of those combinations you want to have, that's fine. That's what needs to you need to have in order for it to work. All right, so we are going to go ahead and solve triangle A, B, and C. So I've got a little chart here that we're going to go ahead and fill out. I'm going to want this angle and the sides, and I want A, B, and C. What's the angle for A, and what's the side for A? So angle A, we don't know yet. Side A, we don't know. B is 53. Side B is 9. C is 100. Side C is unknown. So we know two of the sides. Well, two of the angles, I'm sorry. Well, so two angles and a side. So to find the third angle, that's the easy one to go ahead and find. When you have two angles, to find the third one, you just subtract from 180 because all the angles of a triangle must sum up to be 180. So that ends up giving us 27. So now we have some values we can fill in into our chart here. 53, the 9, the 100, uh, and the 27 also we now know. So now we can go ahead and find out what A is by using this pair. Notice the pair that we have, 53 and 9. All right, so 53 and 9 uh, gets over sine of 27 and A. So what are we going to cross multiply? We're going to type in 9 sine 27 in our calculator, hit the equals, and then divide it by the sine of 53. 9 sine 27 divided by the sine of 53 gives us a value of 5.1. So now we have that 27 and should have the 5.1 in there too. Uh, so now we can do the other side here by doing sine 53 over nine, still staying with that one. Now we could theoretically use this one now that we know that that's that value, but might as well stay with the one we know and sine 100. Cross multiply again, and we get 11.1. .1. So then filling in our chart, notice the red ones are our actual answers and the black ones are what was given. So let's try another one. So here we want to find A, B, and C again. So these are the three that are given. And notice we do have a pair here, which is great. So that pair is very important for us. So then to find out what A is here, we can do sine of 95 over 18 equals sine of 15. And we can cross multiply. And A ends up being a 4.68. It says round in the nearest tenth, so I said 4.7. The other angle, if I have two of them to find it, I just subtract and I get 70, subtract from 180, 
And now again, I go back to that pair that I have and the sine of 70 and cross multiply, I get 16.97 or 17.0. All right, what about this one? Well, let's plug in the ones we know, the 60, uh, 11. It should be 11. This A value should be 11, not 5. That was a mistake here. That should be 11. That's from a leftover problem, equals 7. So sine of 60 over 11 equals sine C over 7. Now notice this one here. We do not know what the angle is. When we don't know the angle like this, we need to do our second sign, our inverse sign. So we still do our cross multiplying, 7 and sine 60 divided by 11, and that gives us our 0 0.5511. Now we go into our calculator and hit second sign of that value. Well, the second sign of that is 33.4. Well, if I have 33.4, I know that's C. Well, now I can find B by doing, subtracting from 180. Once I have that, I'm still missing side B, so now I plug it back into law of sines, the 60 over 11, and now I'm gonna use the 68 over B. So 68 over B, cross multiply, and B equals 12.7, fill in my chart, and that's what my answer is. All right, a baseball is hit between a second and a third baseman in the left field and is caught at point B. How far is it from second base? Well, we know on, in a, on a baseball field that the uh, bases are 90 feet across from each other. And let's say that this is 41 degrees and 58 degrees. So we have an angle side angle kind of deal going on here, but we want to find out what this value is here. So that's across from the 41, that's great. But we don't have a pair. We don't have this value or this value. The only side we have is this 90. So we need this angle. Luckily, that's not too hard to figure out because it is, uh, we have the two angles already. We can find out the third angle. So the third angle is 81. So sine of 81 over 90 equals sine 41 over X. And we're just cross multiplying. When we go ahead and we do that, <coughs> uh, the X should not be here. It just should be sine of 81. We get 59.8. And so that is our value or distance uh, between where he caught it and second base. And that's what I have for you today.